It's winter time in New Orleans. Mardi Gras festival is happening right now and we're on the Mississippi River as it runs down to the delta, the, the finish point of this river that we've been traveling down for the last week and a half. And we have this huge body of water now that has collected some 85 to 90 percent of the runoff from the, the vast majority of the farmland that we have throughout the Midwest. And, and uh, it's been called the breadbasket to the world. And this place that we've been told grows most of the food for the world. Uh, a lot of our farmers along the way have questioned that reality. But we're standing on the banks and there's the obvious remnants of human life around every beach and every river that is in the world now. We've got the plastics and everything else that mark our territory as humans, but it's the invisible trash that is in this river that is most concerning perhaps to the life in the river and to the human life around the river here at the end of this course. We see the highest rates of cancer in the world in this part of the the river, this last 90 miles between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. We have literally millions and millions of pounds of pesticides and herbicides as well as the chemical fertilizers, the nitrates and the phosphates that pour into this river from its many thousands of tributaries that collect from the northern United States down through the Midwest into this single body of water that then pours out into the ocean and creates a dead zone that's larger than New Jersey. This huge thousands of square mile dead zone in the ocean as all of this dumps out into nature at the end of the course of this river. And so we have a recognition of a problem and a calling to address that problem and that problem is going to be ultimately addressed by the daily behavior of you and I and the way in which we shop for our food ultimately and uh, that includes things like this as well. We consume massive amounts of plastics and we consume a massive amount of resources in getting the food to our mouths and we consume food that has been far separated from its original nature and we get to participate that as consumers which is exciting because we are the most powerful influence on industry and business. It's exciting to know that the Monsantos of the world and the chemical companies that have been called into action in our food chain don't control consumer behavior as much as consumer behavior controls them. And so we have the opportunity to, in our knowledge and in our recognition of the problem, change our behavior. And that's going to be done through human relationship more than technology, more than through innovation on the, the business level. It's going to be done through human communities and relationships that are going to get us back in touch with our, our farmlands and with the farmers that manage those properties and the crops that grow on them. And so we're excited to be a part of that with you as we hold each other every day and every year to a higher standard. We need to immediately obviously go beyond the organic call and really go to a state of relationship with your local CSAs, your farmers markets and the like. Uh, because it's in finding those people and encouraging them to continue to hold them to a, a higher standard and opportunity by our own consumer behavior that will, will create the speed of change and the depth of change that we need to create in this country. So very excited to be at the tipping point of this travesty that we've all participated in, the destruction of so much farmland around the world, and then of course the waterways and the rivers and the ocean that they empty into. So thank you for your time and your commitment to your learning, and we engage you and look forward to the opportunity to see change happen through your home and through our own homes in these years to come.